Okay, so you and I, um, this is our, like, fourth session yes. of ten. So we've, we've talked for about six hours all together. Give us a brief. Give us a brief history. Give the listener um, uh, a brief history where you were and why you decided to contact me, and we'll go from there. Okay, sounds good. Okay. So, um, so I've been on this like weight loss, uh, like low carb um, thing for the last year, and I've lost about thirty pounds in the process, well, about twenty five pounds in the process, and then. Um, and then I heard about, um, like HCG, a, a woman that works specifically with, with HCG, um, the HCG protocol. And, um, and so I worked with her and I, and I did that. And, um, it was, you know, and it was fantastic in some ways because, um, you know, in a lot of ways it was the first time that I was forced to, kind of like you talk about in Weight Loss Apocalypse, confront some of the emotional issues that I have with food. Because even when I was doing the low-carb thing and losing weight, like, I was still binging. I would just binge on vegetable stuff. So, yeah, tell um, me how long you've been dieting in your life. Oh, okay. So, let's see. So, I, uh, my first diet when I was six, and, I mean, it's been pretty much like a, a lifetime. Yeah, diet. so your mother is Constant. basically a obsessed about the way you look. Mm-hmm. Is she yeah. obsessed about like the, the way she, yeah. yeah, and she basically <laughs> criticizes and makes fun of, and and she. We've talked about kind of this thin supremacy, right? Mm-hmm. That yeah. she she's obviously doesn't know, but she's a th- thin supremacist. She really thinks thin people have this incredible amount of power, and they're better than. And when she sees someone who's fat, like the other week. She pointed out someone who was obese and said, oh, my God, look at her, right? Yeah. So you grew up with someone who is morally criticizing and judging and stigmatizing people who have more body fat. And when you were sick, she decided to put you on a diet. So you've been dieting. So how old are you? I'm 43. So you're 43, and you've been dieting and feeling bad about your body and food since you were six years old. So... 35 years, Uh over 35 years. Okay, so, and not only that, but how has it affected your life? Yeah, so, you know, in our first conversation, we talked about what percentage of the time you think about either food or binging or body image and how you look and feeling bad about you, how you look or how you measure up. And, you know, 65 to 85% of the time was what I said. Um, I mean, just constant, and and you know, and, and feeling suicidal. Um, even though you know, I mean, um, even though it, on the exterior, I've I'm now you know, I mean, I've, I've lost a lot of the weight, but it certainly didn't come with like, the you know the emotional reward that I thought that it would come with. Okay? Of course, so I was really suicidal. So yeah, suicide and depression. Obviously, there's depression there that you've been dealing with and um in terms of how you feel about yourself feel about your life feel about your job your career how your plan has been what your life's been about etc um and the other thing too is um with that uh how has it affected not just your sense of identity but your identity in society how do you how do you feel about yourself or how did you feel about yourself before um, you know, just, I mean, everything, everything funneled through the, the concept of being thin and whether or not I measured up on any particular day, what the scale said, you know, how I looked in it and how I felt in a particular pair of pants. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that determined my day, not what I was, you know, doing at work, not what I felt like I was contributing in relationships. Yeah, and how did that affect your attitude about work and relationships and people and your and how you I mean how you how you created relationships with other people? We talked about that last se- the last session about the way you were with other people because you because of this severe sense of inadequacy. What you were trying to do? Do you recall what we yeah. talked? What what we said? Um. 
Well, yeah, that, that I'm really manipulative mm-hmm. and, 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 and lack of integrity. And that's really true. I mean, my relationships. Um, I'm pretty jacked up. I mean, because there's a lot of hiding that I do. I mean, I project yeah. an image. It's all about image. Yeah. Know? So I project an image. And then what's like yeah. true, I, you know, I'll hide that away or I'll let that out a little part. Yeah. Because everything is directed towards, will you love me? Will you approve of me? Yes. And, and so, it's, and, and it was. It's not authentic. No, and it puts you in a position of always feeling inadequate, and, and it makes the insecurity worse. And we talked about that vicious cycle. You're super insecure and unaware of what makes you worthy, uh, comparing yourself to these cultural ideals, feeling bad about yourself, trying to project something better than that than what you feel, and then feel, feeling like a like uh, um, the lack of like, remember when you said there's a, there, we, well, we talked about there's this level of paranoia that goes into it too because you don't think they really like you. Even if they show that they like you and they're showing like comfort around you, you, you think that they're, they're lying to some degree, partly because you're lying. So you're projecting your fakeness in, in the relationship onto them. And then it just creates a whole lot of chaos around proving themselves and proving yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's in it. But do you see now how understandable that is? Yeah, I do. Yeah, and it's not, you're not a bad person. It's very understandable. And do you agree that most people with that perception of themselves would have a similar relationship with others? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, mm hmm. That's when yeah. we say it's somewhat predictable. And in terms of needing companionship and wanting to be accepted and loved, but using these things that are very extrinsic to prove yourself, you're going to have vulnerability because of that fear of being like, I'm not good enough. I have to do better. I have to prove myself, etc. Okay. So you started watching my YouTube videos. How much help have you gotten, by the way? How much therapy and have you gone to like overeaters? Have you had all sorts of, what type of like help have you received over the years? Oh, so much. Um, so, I mean, I've been in counseling pretty much all of my life. Uh, my mom put me into that when I was in junior high because it's my problem. Um, and... Um, and then, yeah, you know, I mean, but, but pretty much all my life, I mean, some type of counseling, I've been through a lot of like eating disorder specific type of counseling. I've been in groups before that encouraged like a, you know, like eating according to, uh, you know, to, to, to fullness, you know, and that was the way they presented it. Um, and, and then, yeah, I've been to OA off and on over the years. OA is Overeaters um, Anonymous. Okay. Yeah. So you've had, th- so you've had, have you, um, seen any specialists with eating disorders? I mean, have you ever seen a, so. ther- okay. Okay. So, and you could maybe look back and go, there was always something you got from it. Maybe an understanding. Am I right or wrong? That there's always some benefit to that. It's not like oh, you've yeah. gotten nothing out of it. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. But, I would also say that it was really frustrating too, because it felt like I'm putting in the time, I'm putting in the effort, I'm going through these painful emotions, and and yeah, like you know, everything's a process, and we are where we are at the time we are, you know. Um, but it, it was really frustrating because it was it didn't feel like I was getting anywhere, and I would just you know, I mean, I would go to therapy and then just bitch, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, and did did they tell you you were addicted to sugar? Or oh yeah, a food addict. Yeah, tell me this. What was the 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 biggest enabler in, that you see now? Now, where from where you're at? Uh huh. Where do you see the biggest like this is this is where they're going wrong? Because at this point, you have a degree of compa- you have a comparison. Right. Right. Like where are they? Where are the blinders? I don't want to say where they're going wrong because they're doing the best they can. But where are they blind to reality? Yeah. Well, I, I think that, and this one's, you know, I don't really struggle with this one, but the whole concept of, like, accept your body, you know, as it is now, but also, like, accept yourself, accept 
yourself that all of your life. Now what are you going to do? And stop, stop worshiping, you know, sin supremacy. Stop trying, stop subscribing to that ideal. Yeah, that being it's thin or fit everything. or healthy makes you superior as a human being. Right. Yeah, yeah that I mean, and, and, is yeah, pretty a pretty big cornerstone to this. Don't you agree that that's kind of like, that's pretty much the root, seed, cause, cornerstone, everything. If you exactly. look. Yeah. So that you can see clearly now. And how has that affected your relationship with food over the last week and a half, two weeks that we've been working together? Yeah. So that's weird. But um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like I'll have the impulse to eat for emotional reasons. And, and so, like, what I'm learning is, like, that's, like, the canary in the coal mine that I have to, okay, so what's going on, and, and am I worshiping sinness, or am I imposing some type of extrinsic ideal, you know? Yeah. And then, by doing that, it's, like, I mean, gone. I mean, it'll, it, normally, it'll, it'll go right away. Now, sometimes it's a little more check. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially if you've already convinced yourself you're going to binge, like if you've already negotiated for, right. for food. Have you noticed that you are totally negotiating for food? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. whole thing is logical. <laughs> you are planning. You're intellectualizing the entire thing. Do you see that now? Mm -hmm. isn't, yeah. that, isn't that amazing? Considering before you thought that it was... I'm addicted. I can't stop it. It's an impulse. It just takes me. Uh -huh. I just don't know what I'm doing. And now you're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I am in complete control of over what I'm doing here. And the other thing too is many times the binge is with something you don't even like or it's not even appealing. You're just going to eat it out of out of principality around the fact that you're not allowed to eat it. So you're going to eat that anyway. So anyway, so tell me where you're at in terms of um, this process and and what you want to share with the viewer here. Mm. Well, I mean, I, I guess, you know, there, there's the thing that um, it, it's remarkable to me. I've, uh, okay, so if I just... It's, it's remarkable to me, not just how my attitude is starting to change around food, um, the fact that, like, the shift to, to not judging everyone around me based on what they look like. And I mean everyone, you know, male, female, old, young, you know, regardless of what people look like, not having that first initial uh, tendency to judge people based on how they look mm -hmm. like that has, has really shifted and, and, and tell me how that's impacted your overall mood oh my mood is, is dramatic I mean I, so I was I had the experience and, and I, I, I have a I have a I have a good job it, it's a good it's, you know it's an interesting job um, and but, but I would like to dread it and, and before you know we started working together and I had the experience the other, and I would often like negotiate eating uh, at work because oh, it's so stressful. And I was working the other day, and I got I felt myself get hungry, but I was so I was I was truly enjoying what I was doing, and I didn't want to stop working to go eat. And that I, I don't think I don't I don't think that's ever happened. Um, and and so I mean, just being able to to feel like really just immersed or to feel real enjoyment from 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 my job from everything like <laughs> I mean it's just it's just weird how much more I'm I'm appreciating I mean I don't I, I don't feel so vital. Um and we haven't been working together all that long. I mean we've been working together for a couple of weeks. You know Six, I mean, so it's, it's it, this is our sixth hour. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Granted, once you and I talk there's all sorts of processing that you're doing all all I'm doing is saying here why don't you look at it this way and you're going oh my god I never thought that that view existed holy shit I should think about that and now you're thinking about it what you should be feeling is this relaxation in your head you should feel like you have space in your brain now and there's thinking that's going on and the other thing that you should feel is that the chains that you've had so tightly held and bond, the bondage that you've had 
should feel like you are letting it go. It's not letting you go. You're letting it go. Mm -hmm. You get that sense that it's yours. You're the one who is releasing this. That to me is the most powerful part of this process is that it is, it is a process where you surrender it. And so what's the likelihood you're going to suffer from this when this is over? Oh, exactly. And you're not doing a, a program that's out here. It's not the program isn't making this happen, is it? I don't have a program. This is not a program. You said a message to me before we started. Can you give me an idea of what, how this works? You are not the only one that's done that. I'm like, this works organically. You and I talk. Uh, we have conversations, and each conversation we open up and expose and open your mind and open. It's like stretching your head open, and you're mm -hmm. like, it's like yoga, right? It's like the um, an yeah. emotional yoga. Yeah. I'm gonna stretch this out, and all of a sudden you have more air in your brain, and you can think a little differently. And now it becomes, and now there's a difference, right, from the way you were thinking before and the way you're thinking now, and you have a sense of it. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All I'm doing is having a conversation with you, isn't it? The truth. Mm, yeah, no, totally. Yeah. And it's weird because I'm starting to differentiate when I'm like, I don't know, it's, it's like flipping a switch. It feels like flipping a switch. Oh, you sound, and, you sound like my other clients that are on these YouTube videos right now. Oh, it's like, cling. It is a switch that flips, but do you realize that what's, what I'm doing, all I'm doing is exposing the supremacy and the, the thin supremacy, the body image superiority, that's what you believe in, and you're going, holy crap, that's really true. I actually take people's bodies and put them in an order of value. That's really messed up. What's the difference between yeah. thin supremacy and white supremacy? It's kind of the same thing, just using a different model, and I don't like it. Now you see it as flawed and... You also see that it has been the root cause of why you feel so ashamed about your body. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't make sense to you once you realize that, well, hold on a second. If I don't di identify myself and others and their value as humans by the way they look, their skin color, their height, their race, and their thinness, more importantly, then how, how do I identify who I am? And that's what we've been talking about. Like, now what? If you don't have, if you're not, you know, unhealthy inferior or fat inferior, what makes you worth anything at this point if you get rid of that paradigm? And, and that right there is like, ah, oh my God, who am I? If I'm not defined by my body shape and size, then what, what am I defined by? And if you could start over, and this is what we talked about before, you could just start over, not with a new body, but with this new concept. How would you identify yourself and would you make it about your body image? Yeah, no. No, no <laughs> shit, right? So no. the, the other thing is, okay then, and we go into, okay, let's pretend the body is as if this is real. Your body's going to be this fat forever, for the rest of your life. So that body image, um, similar similar to this color of your skin or the race that you were born, it's permanent. You don't have to identify by someone else's superiority or inferiority of it. You can just let it be what it is and then re-identify as the character that is you've been hiding for so long. So one of the things we also talked about, and I'll close with this, is that oftentimes when someone has been identified by a religion that, that tells you how to dress, how to think, how to believe, who you are, and what your life's going to be like, that or body image or some type of identity that is not, that is extrinsic identity. Like, I have to be the smartest. I have to be the best. I have to be the, an athlete. I have to be this religion, whatever it is right? Mm -hmm. I eat, I'm a vegetarian. Whatever that identity is, is if you had to remove it completely, what happens for people who've been raised this way is they don't have a sense of anything. 
It's almost like there's this empty pit of nothing without it. It feels like you are you have no life and there's nothing existing otherwise. So it feels like you're going to die. Okay. Right? It, oh, if you let yeah. it go. And what and I had to go through that. I did it. That's that's why I have I can describe it. It's like, well, this is what I felt like. I felt like a, there was nothing underneath me. If I let this go, I'm going to fall to my death. And I decided I would rather. And so it's an inevitable part of this process that everybody gets to. And you're there. Can you tell that you are really close? Yeah, I can. And when you, you know, you, you said it once. Well, we talked about, um, yeah, we, I mean, we talked about death and, and starting over. And and I do feel like I'm getting closer to that because I'm starting to enjoy that and starting to, um, you know, it's like, well, all right, let's, let's live that. Because uh, this, this, this other way has sucked. And it's been, you know, and when you really start to, to blow it open and consider, start taking away all of the little patches, when I start to take away those little patches that I've put on my life to make it livable, given like all of the, the negative hatred that I'm feeding myself all the time, it's like, you know, who would want to live like this? Okay, awesome. I do get to start over. And, and you know, now I get to take enjoyment. Yeah. yeah, and we talked about, too, it's like, well, if you do ultimately commit suicide, as you've been considering, it's like, well, you get the do-over, but you don't get to, you, maybe, right? If you come back, you're going to have to start as a baby. You're going to have to start with a new family, a new paradigm, a new, you know, form of conformity, a new, you get to do it again as a <laughs> child growing up. Whereas if you just reincarnate, right, or you're born again, depending on how you describe it, you get to start over as an adult right now. So you don't have to deal with your parents telling you how to live. You don't have to deal with, you know, some girl who tells you you're ugly or some boy that says you're too fat or you've already done all that. So you can start right now and have complete freedom, uh, like 100% freedom within the, con the, within the system we live, right? All right. And even then, within the system that we live, you have leniency to conform or not to conform based on what you believe is right and wrong. It's, it comes from within your heart, right? It's like, I am who I am from the heart. That's my true integrity, and ultimately, that's what's going to navigate my, the next life anyways, right? And in your next life, you would give the next body a ton of grace because you don't want to be defined by it anymore. You want to be defined by the soul or the alma, or the heart, or the integrity, or however you want to describe that empty pit. I've described it as an empty heart. I have a heart, and it's so empty, and I keep it that way. I don't want to define it. I don't want it to be that shape all the time. I have that, I call it a bubble that can change shapes as I grow and learn and become more aware and have more grace to figure things out, right? Mm -hmm. That if you were you were to start over, what if you if you define yourself right? If you re-identify yourself by this sense of your worth from the heart, right? You're navigating from the heart or the soul. Does it matter what body you're in if if you identify by the heart? No. Uh -uh. So in order for you to lead with the heart, you're going to have to accept whatever body it's in. Mm -hmm. So if you can't accept this one, what makes you think you're going to know how to accept a different one? Right. So exactly. even if you do commit suicide and reincarnate and get a new body, or in your mind, if you could get a better body, you would have to accept that one. Mm -hmm. So what... What's the difference between accepting this one versus the next one? Yeah, I'd rather just go with this one, you know? Well, it know, takes... With, with what I have right now. Yeah, it takes the same technique, right? We yeah. say there's a technique in terms of accepting the body you're in. You go in, you feel it out, you see what its limits are, you accept what its freedoms are, and you go from there. So in any given body, that's what you have to do. Same technique. The technique it takes to um, accept and love and check the box for this one, this is good enough, is the same technique it's going to take with a different one. Yeah. 
no matter what size, race, shape, height, limits, the technique is this is what I have and I have to accept it, right? So if we yeah. look at this body and you say in terms of body fat and this thin supremacy that I live in, this is how much fat I have. And if I can accept this, then the supremacy of the, the sin, thin supremacists and health supremacists out there who worship the body, they have no power. Because you're accepting this. So if you accept the body you're in and the state it's in, then does it matter if you are rejected because someone doesn't think you're thin enough for them? No. No. And, and one of the things that, that, I, that I love about this process right now is, um, it, 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 you know, I mean, it really is like that, making that mental shift and is, 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 is instantaneous. And not believing in in the thin supremacy that's instantaneous and it cuts off suffering immediately. Um, it doesn't it? You know, I know. As soon as you do that, though, but you've what you've recognized is that, and that you're saying this because you've been waffling for the last two weeks. We've been talking about this since our first consult, and you've been like gradually opening your mind to look at this and you get are now getting a sense that once you make this decision your issues are over yeah right because all of a sudden when you accept the body as it is in any state and you allow it to be a body so that you can have the freedom to be a heart all of a sudden what happens to these issues around food oh uh, yeah because it, it no longer serves that that purpose. No, and you're not being deprived. You're not being, mm -hmm. you know, it's not being taken from you. The food that you would have binged on, you can have at any time, so it doesn't matter. You don't have the shame about eating food anymore because you don't have shame about your body image. So it doesn't project onto your food. The 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 food issues. The majority of the <laughs> I will, I will end with this. The obesity epidemic is actually a dieting epidemic. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. All of us humans out here who are fighting obesity are actually fighting dieting. That's what it is. There's this restriction around food and it's an, it's, it's a body image epidemic. People feeling really bad about their bodies. I mean, you could go, you could see your body on a sliding scale and you'll say, I've always felt bad. Always. It doesn't matter how thin I get, I still feel shitty about it. Even if I pretend that I'm superior and I've reached some level of like supremacy, you still feel bad about it because you're afraid it's going to go away because it's a lie. It's fake. It's not real. It's like this outer shell trying to prove that you have worth with nothing inside of it. There's not even a heart because you don't give that life, right? So if you decide I am no longer identified by thin supremacy or fat inferiority and I just get to have this body and it works for me and my needs are just life, you can totally re-identify yourself and the coolest part about it is you can use your wisdom to re-identify yourself. It's not like you're still 12 years old and now have to prove yourself through I'm the smartest on the class or I have the most amount of money. You're not going to go into those superficial bullshit cultural crap because you see it for what it is in your adulthood. Right. You're just going to be yourself. Whatever that is, there doesn't, you don't even need a definition of what that is. Are you getting that as well? That you don't have to have a bullet point list of who you are. The yeah. bullet point list of who you are is a sign of, of someone who doesn't, who needs a facade. It's like, I want to play a character. If I don't have a character to act, I don't know who I am. Well, that's okay. You're going to have to develop a sense of whatever that is. Right? Right. So that's where we where we're kind of at. That's the there's a death and then there's a birth. And you've got to just decide that when you rebirth yourself here without the body image identity that has made your sense of self so weak. That's real. That you're going to have to start with whatever weakness is there. I felt nothing. So I said, Well, I know I'm kind. That's the closest thing I've got. I know that I have a good heart, I have good integrity. That's all I have. And I don't even know if that's real, but I'm going to go with it, right? That's where, that's the next step, honey. It's okay. So we, that's where we left off with our last session.
And to close, tell us how you've done since two days ago. Well, I'm happier in general, and that's that's the thing for me. I mean, it's it's like I'll take it. you know, it, for me now, it's like how can I find joy, you know, in this day? And not, I don't expect to be ecstatic all the time, but to be looking at life through the lens of like what feels good in this moment, like what am I drawn to in this moment, um, and going with that. And then that, you know, I mean, so food is a part of that, but it's just a part of that, like it should be, you know? Yes. So it's just a part of life. And then mm. it's like, you know, like, what, what do I intuit, what do I intuitively feel drawn to right now in all aspects of life? And, and to tell the truth about it. Lot more joy, joy and the key is to tell the truth about it. Right? I said that again. It, the key is to tell the truth about it. I remember yeah. this feeling so clearly. It's like, I've always had that feeling. But I didn't want to look at that. I was too afraid of that feeling of what I wanted because I knew it wasn't good enough. Right. So it's always been there. This integrity's always been there. I knew it had always been there, but it was I, why I use that. It, it's got to be ignored. That's a you got to ignore that, right? Ignore your heart right. because it's not good enough. Someone's going to make fun of it. You're going to get rejected. Your yeah. your family's not going to love you if you use that. I mean, there's so much fear involved with that heart. It's like. You got to, first of all, look at it, acknowledge it, and then use it. That's like telling the truth. Exactly. And, and it's simple. And like you said, it's not a, it's not a list of bullet points. It's, it's, it's simple and it's natural. Somebody in, in one of your videos talked about, well, I'm afraid. Like, what do I have to do if I stop relying on food? You know, and it's like... It doesn't need to be like this whole other program. It doesn't have to be this whole, you don't have to project yourself into another way, a way of being. It's just being, you know, it's just, it's, no, it's just, really natural. Yeah, and you, and, um, yeah, I, I love, I love what we're talking about here. Okay, so I'm going to stop recording. Is there anything else that you want to say? No, I'm not for now. Thank you. All right, thanks for sharing.